Uh, ones where we're kind of just like, this. it doesn't seem like you're coming to attack me, you know what I'm saying? You heard that uh, saying that's like, you can take a horse to war, but you can't make a drink. Yes. You heard that? It's yeah. like, that's what it is here, man. People just trying to make these horses drink, and they're never going to drink. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. I mean, so you were talking about your own faith and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for me, personally, it's just kind of like, I just... Uh, Questions. I don't know. I guess uh, I, I kind of love like, the university. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll take some. So in the meantime, go ahead. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. You said you were talking about. He was saying that okay. Well, some of the things that he he listens to when he listens to like speakers' corner videos yeah. makes him question his own faith and things. Me, what 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 is your own? What's your faith? So me personally, I'm. Um, uh, fully recent years I've discovered gods and I use the word gods that's my word like uh, but I know that there's many different ways to call it I'm not religious at all okay. don't get me wrong but I also believe that um, ancient knowledge has a lot of important things I believe there's a lot of bad stuff in it that people have changed throughout history and claim it as something else if you know what I'm saying yeah yeah so, I get you yeah, yeah. anyway so yeah I believe that ancient stuff has like important stuff to say but the spiritual side is within each person. That's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. So what you said you discovered God, can you elaborate a little bit more on that point? So I grew up in, like, around this area. And for me, like, uh, because of, like, where I grew up from, it was hard to believe in God at first, you know? So, like, you know what I mean? Like, you see tough times, so you think, how can there really be a God? But that's just because of what you're being told by everyone else of what life is really. And then once, once I started to really open my mind and think about why I was really here, uh, what this place was, this is what, for me, made me start believing in God. To be honest, I started um, opening doors. This is a bit of a random one, but when I heard about 9-11 stuff, that was the first trigger for me, in a way, conspiracy theories, opening up into the world like what was truly going on. So, so. Right, right. So you say that you believe in God, but you're not that not religious. religious in that sense. Okay, I so I would For me, I personally believe that the ancient stories are basically true. Mm -hmm. But say, for example, I don't want to. You know, I'm careful saying this. No, now, say what you need to say, yeah, man. I, Be I as open as possible. I, yeah. I don't agree at all with Christianity in the way that. I believe the Old Testament stands as a story from start to finish. And I think Christianity came along after that, and I don't think it's actually related myself. I also think, based on something I've read about, um, you know, these uh, almond priests in Egypt, that this kind of seems to me like the origins of like the Catholic Church, in a way. Or maybe, you know, some of the uh, earlier roots of it. And, you know, so I don't personally agree with that part. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. So, we can start with the premise that, okay, you believe in God. Yeah, yeah, yeah that the, the, there is a creator to this universe that he created us, created the universe. He positioned human beings on a planet called Earth. That's their placement, and he's sustaining us. He's maintaining us. He's you know all these things. Yeah, that's very good. Okay. Now the question is now: Did he create us for a reason, or did he create us for no reason? I believe that the whole purpose of all of this is obviously for us. Like, right. it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for us to begin with. Right. No one else experiences this level of consciousness. That's, we're separate from everything else. We obviously are. We are like, you know, at least the children of God. At least, you know what I mean? Like, I can see what you're saying, for sure. You're saying that the Earth, the universe, everything. So it seems like we've been strategically placed in such a way as would allow for us to take advantage of everything else more so than the opposite. Or just that... Uh, like, in the way that the only thing we know that can appreciate the color green is people. Right. Like a dog or something. Very powerful. Think, very good. Yeah. I love green. You know what I'm saying? But basically, we appreciate that's good. things on the next level. I think that's a very well, good, nice way of putting that. That's a quote maybe some people are going to use now. You never okay. know. <laughs> but what I was going to say to you is now, let's take it one step further. Let me ask you a, a question. Do you think there is a purpose of life? A defined purpose of life, uh, defined by God, for instance. I guess there, 
There actually is, yeah. There has to be. And and once you know it, that's when you're ready for, to leave it. Right. Because... So, yeah. I was going to say to you, that's exactly what we believe, right? Yeah. Here's the Islamic belief system. I'll tell you now. The Islamic belief system is that God created us. God maintained us. God sustains us. He strategically placed us on the earth and gave us the ability to know ourselves and to know Him. Okay? And then He fixed for us a purpose. And that purpose is to submit to His will. Now let me tell you what that means in a little bit more detail. If you look around, there are laws of physics, if you like, laws of nature. And if you look around, those laws of nature appear to be fixed. There appears to be some kind of... Right? Everything within the universe, within the cosmos, seems to be in compliance with the laws of nature. Now, if there's a law, that implies there's a lawmaker. In that sense, the Quran indicates to us that God, just in the same way as He put everything in the universe, and everything within the universe is submissive to Him. In the same way, human beings have to also be submissive to Him. So, we, in other words, in order for us to be one with nature, we have to do what everything else in nature is doing, which is submitting to the laws of God. The only difference is, the laws set by God, um, respective to inanimate things, to the cosmos, to celestial bodies, to the atom, to what's uh, on a subatomic level, are fixed and there is no choice attached to those entities. In other words, the earth can't, deter yeah, the, the earth can't determine or decide to turn the other way around. On the other hand, human being, and this other creature we believe is called jinn, those two creatures have choice. Oh, yeah, yeah, jinn, yeah, yeah. Yes. So the Quran says, We haven't created human beings, okay, jinn, and human beings, except that they may worship me. In a nutshell, therefore, the purpose of life, according to Muslims, is to worship God, to submit to His will. Does that make sense? And now, how is this purpose of life communicated to communities? We believe it was communicated to communities in so much as there were prophets and messengers that came that told those communities about that thing. They came with two things. They came with the message, which is to believe that there's nothing worthy of worship except for God. And they also came with the evidence, some kind of extraordinary proof to prove their, their, uh, their, they are true speakers. So we believe in messengers like Noah and Moses and Abraham we believe the final messenger is the Prophet Muhammad He's, He would say he is not differentiated in terms of message, but he is differentiated in terms of the fact that all the other prophets and messengers came to their people, whereas he came for all of human beings. The Quran says, We haven't sent you except for all of human beings. But most of human beings will not know this. Now, all the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in his message, which is Quran and the Hadith. The Quran is the word of God, according to Muslims. The Hadith is the sayings and the actions of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, which we believe came from God initially. That is the blueprint. These are the laws that we must follow. And by following the blueprint or following those laws, we then become submissive. So a Muslim is someone who is submissive. What do you think so far of this? So my interpretation of it personally is that we're talking about this universal law and I believe in it as well. You can't get any further. Anything that you take, it leads back to this one thing essentially. You know, all operates in the same way. I don't know, this is how I'm interpreting okay, it. Okay, right. So like, um, when you say it is to be submissive, for me it is to, it's to like, how I would say it is like, we have to go with the flow. Obviously I think that, because we are people that, that have this path to walk, our flow is a good flow, you know what I mean? We, if you go against the flow, that's when stuff goes bad. But if you're with the flow, that is the way. You learn these things and then you live by them because that is the flow that's been given to you. That's why I've been saying so far. I see what you're saying, but let me tell you what I think you've been affected by. You, it seems like you've been affected by it. I've been watching this guy recently, sometimes, his videos. Oh, you're back. No, you're right. You're good. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah? Alhamdulillah. Sorry. 
Yeah. I'll take this. Nice. Don't walk off with it, yeah, bro. <laughs> nah, no worries. Do you know this guy? His name is Russell Brandt. Yeah. You know him? He's very popular in the UK. You know? Yeah. And I've been trying to watch his stuff on what he believes about spirituality and religion. And, uh -huh. and he seems to indicate that he believes in God or a higher power of some sort. Right. But what he does say is, uh, is that he doesn't believe in, it seems to me, that's my interpretation of his speech, is that he doesn't really subscribe to the dogma of religion. Fair enough. You see yeah. what I'm saying? I yeah, 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 I agree with that. Right, so he, do he doesn't seem that's, to. That's where it is. Yeah, so in yeah. other words, he believes in something yeah, yeah. Uh, higher power, but he doesn't believe in the dogma yeah. of religion. And the argument seems to be as follows. Once again, I might be wrong about his argument. I'm not even sure if he's making an argument. But the argument seems to be that religion is very dogmatic. And the dogma is not required, in a sense. What's better required is for us to, uh, to go through a, sense, uh, a state of self-development, spiritual self-discovery, where we ourselves find you know, the answers. So in other words, it's a very self-centered or self-centric model of yeah. spirituality. Yeah, it can be. And rather than being, for instance, a, um, a God-centric or let's say, for instance, even a religious-centric model, yeah. it's okay, let's see what we can find out for ourselves, rather than let's subscribe to a religion which tells us. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get what you're saying. That's that's that line of thought. So it's, it's, some people refer to it in the vernacular as spiritualism. It's okay, look, yeah, we're very yeah. spiritual people because we believe in God, etc., etc. What I would say is problematic is there's two implied assumptions here. Number one implied assumption is that dogma entails falsity. Dogma doesn't always imply falsity. In fact, almost everything which claims to be true is dogmatic in a sense. Right. Science is very dogmatic, you know, in a, in a, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Many philosophies are very dogmatic. It is, it right? is. Just because something is dogmatic, it doesn't mean it's untrue. I agree with that. Right? Yeah. So when we talk about religion as being dogmatic, mm. sometimes it is. I mean, if you look at the dictionary definition of what a dogma is... We know that happens in religion. Right? There's good sides and there's bad sides. I, I, what, I'm saying there is, what I'm saying is more than this. I'm saying that something which is dogmatic, which they say is uncompromising. Dogma is something which is uncompromising. Okay. Just because it's uncompromising, it doesn't mean it's false, right? Right. But there is a subtext here, there is an implicit assumption that because religion is dogmatic, or in particular Abrahamic religions, because the Eastern religions are not as dogmatic, to be fair. Hinduism and Buddhism are, are not as certain. I guess so. As Islam and Christianity and Judaism claim to be, right? Mm -hmm. So because something is dogmatic, that it ought not to be followed, because it constrains you. And do you know what's underlying that? It's a liberal belief that we should, the purpose of life, and they don't want to admit this, but people like Russell Brandon, that they don't say this clearly. But it's premised, it seems like his purpose of life is premised on the idea that we're all just free creatures. That we are here to be as free as possible. And that goes back to a pre-enlightenment or even uh, enlightenment liberalism. Yeah, okay. That we should be free. That there should be no, nothing to, 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 to restrain and constrain us. I think you see what I'm saying. Well, my personal belief is that, like, you know, I agree with what you're saying because this Russell Brand thing is pushing the wrong side of things, in my personal belief, because it's it's promoting a kind of side of it that becomes more about the ego and the material and like, you know, for oneself, and it separates what the true sacrifice it is, which you have to take part in this real. What, uh, what I believe is going on is that we will have a test, right, and you have to work in that. You don't just like uh, come down here and have it all easy and then suddenly have all the answers or anything. Right, right. Each person's got their own path and that's why personally for me I do call it spiritual because I don't, my word for it is spiritual. As someone else associates their information to the another, say, words to represent what they are. I see what you're saying, but what I'm saying is something, yes, you're right. What I'm saying is that in the beginning, if you remember our conversation, we said, what, is there a truth out there? Okay. A, T, a truth with a capital T. Okay, okay. Is there an absolute objective, real thing that we must be doing in our lives? Okay. If we assume that there is, human beings are not just here haphazardly yeah. and for no reason. Or the only reason is subjective, that is self-constructed. We're saying no, there is an actual truth. There's a, there is a moral out there that we have to achieve. Truth is something that I think comes inevitably to like a perspective. Yeah. And so there is only like a half truth. Uh, a truth to an individual is truth, but we know that the fact that people disagree, that there's more than one kind of truth because of how Here's they hold it. Back in the days, because what you seem to be saying is something along the lines of 
what the relativists say. Like, you know, back in the days, there used to be a, a group of people called the Sophists in the Greek period. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Socrates had an argument with them. Yeah, yeah. Socrates was like, so you're saying everyone's truth is the same? Yeah. He, he said, yeah. The, the Sophists, he said, yeah, I believe everyone's truth is the same. If you're saying everyone's truth, everyone is entitled to truth, you're making the same argument. Now, Socrates turned around and said, what? He said, okay, my truth is that my... My truth is that there is an absolute truth and that relative truth is not true. Is that true? If that becomes true, all the other truths become false. Yeah, yeah. Right, so in that sense, this relativist model where everyone can just do what they want or, or a liberal model, whatever, it doesn't answer any questions. It doesn't have, yeah. any, um, it doesn't have any hard objective way of realizing that it is. What I'm saying is this, the truth is one. The same creator that created human beings and he knew the, uh, he knew what it would require for them to be in this universe, to live, prosper, yeah. to realize themselves in him, yeah. is the same creator which fixed for us the commands, in this case the yeah. Quran and the, and this is what we believe. All of those books are instructions from the creator. Yeah. Okay, they're guidance. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, does it make sense that the Creator would instruct human beings in that capacity? That He would give them guidance? Well, that's that's a big question, but I personally do believe that just basing it on my own moral compass and what the what I believe it, the ancients were saying, that God sent that, that yeah, He did. Because clearly these are good, good way to like balance yourself. Well, look, it says it there. I feel, you know, that's right, and when I did that, I felt wrong. That yeah, they're not, they're telling the truth. So yes. that's for me. Like I do, that's my belief. Yeah. Perfect. So if that's the case, then we have all of these prophets that came mm. to deliver what they thought or what they say God revealed to them, which they had evidence for. Yeah. Okay. We had Jesus. We had Moses. We had Abraham, and we had Muhammad. Right. Now, why we're differentiating from Christians? Christians say that Jesus is God. Yeah, yeah. He I don't agree with that. Yeah. And we're saying that Jesus could not be God, and that yeah. God did not have any children. That's one of the main things for me is that it says in the Old Testament, uh, "Worship no god above me." Yes. And then, obviously, later on, it comes back round. It's like. Guys, I died for your sins exactly. and worship me, and it's all good. Exactly. And obviously, so, so here, yeah. Islam goes against this. It yeah, says yeah. that God doesn't have any children, He doesn't have any partners, yeah. he, uh, that, that no man can be God, right? That Jesus is not God. Yeah, yeah. All of those things, right? So, in a nutshell, what I'm saying to you is that what makes more sense to you? Sorry. What makes more sense to you on the outset? The Islamic model or the Christian model? Islamic model, 100%. All right. so it's but I don't know uh, enough about the Islamic model myself, I'll be honest. I, I haven't, haven't really but all died. you need to know for now is that Islam is a religion which confirms all of the religions that came before it tells the Abrahamic religions, yeah. but fixes that which we believe went wrong. So for, for instance, the idea that Jesus is God, the Son of God, etc. That we don't believe in. We believe there's one God, one ultimate supreme creator of the universe. Of course. Yeah. And that he set the purpose and there's no other God except for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that we worship him. Uh, yeah, I agree with that stuff. That's right. Right. And we will say that all the prophets came only to tell the people about that and Prophet Muhammad was the final messenger. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So it seems to me like what you've done, in effect, is you've agreed with Islam. Oh, no, of course. Yes. Like, if you if you say, this is Islam to me, yes. and you say what you just said, I agree 100% with Islam. So what you need to do then, you the know, next step, naturally, yeah. is that what you usually say, if you like to go up, <laughs> What, to become Muslim, all you do is you say two phrases. What are the phrases? You say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. What does it mean? I testify there's only God, one God worthy of worship. Right. And I testify that Muhammad is the final messenger. The, the Muhammad is the messenger that is the only bit I can't, I haven't researched that. Okay. The, the first bit I'm happy to say, you know what I mean? Yes. Like. Okay. That, uh, what objections do you have so far? Because what we know of Muhammad Salah's Uh, nothing. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so let me give you, some, let me give you a quick overview. Yeah. Muhammad was a man who was born in Arabia. Uh -huh. Okay, and this man, he went to a cave. He lived for 40 years. He lived in a cave. Uh, he, lived in a cave. he went to a cave with Bar Hira. He went to this cave. And then revelation started to come to him. 
So the angel grabbed him and said, Iqra, read. So he said, I can't read because he was actually illiterate. So the angel came again and said, Iqra. So he said, read. So man of Bukhari, he said, I can't read. So the angel came up and said, Iqra. So he said, recite in the name of your Lord. Iqra, Bismillah Rabbika, the one who created, created human being from a clot. Uh, recite in the name of the Lord, the one who uh, taught the human being with the pen. Yeah? These were the first verses of the Quran that were revealed. Now, over a span of 23 years, the Quran will come down piecemeal, in an interval way, bit by bit. Until he died, now, we, now what we have is the Quran, the Quran, the full Quran. Now, some of the evidences that the Quran is in fact from God and could not be from a human being are as follows. The Quran makes a challenge. It says, it says that if you believe it's from other than God, then try and make a make a chapter like it. Sorry, what? what if, if you believe this book is from other than God, okay, I'll try and make. Yeah, make something like it. Okay. In other words, the Arabic language, yeah. the predictions in the Quran, the structure yeah. of the Quran, the power of the Quran, the fact that the Quran changed human beings in a way that no other book did mm. and could. All of those things, that is a challenge for human beings and no one has been able to meet that challenge. Even the, the strongest linguists at that time, the strongest grammarians could not meet that challenge. The Quran says, Kulla al insu al jinn. If all of human beings in the jinn came together to try and construct something like this Quran, they would not be able to construct anything like it, even if they helped each other. The point is that there is an inimitability challenge in the Quran. The Quran says if you want to, if you believe that this book is not from God, then try and make something like it. Make something which people read as much, memorize as much. Make something which captures the minds as much. Yeah, exactly. I yes, agree with all of that stuff. I agree with all that right. stuff, and I, I personally do believe that that stuff is definitely from God. That is like the, you know, these initiating things that we needed for this, Absolutely. for this all. We've been brought here through this, you know, this guidance from one point, and I agree with all of that stuff. Don't Let get me, me wrong. The Quran also says, if this book was from other than God, they would have seen in it many contradictions. So the point is this, it's not only that it's inimitable, but it's, it doesn't have any contradictions. When you see people talk, usually you find contradictions in what they thought. But this, this book has no contradictions and it, it challenges people to find contradictions. And people try and find contradictions. Mm. But the thing is, the book still stands and the people still believe in it. Nice. And, and so as far as we're concerned, no damning evidence has ever been presented for 1,400 years. Okay. Moreover, the Quran makes predictions of the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And human beings cannot make predictions of the future. By their nature, if I tell you something, I'm, I can only be speculative in my judgment. If I say, look, tomorrow, I don't know what's in your school, Portsmouth, yeah? One, one thing though, Go ahead. you actually believe human beings can't see the future. I believe that human beings can see the future with God's help. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. So the Prophet Muhammad, for instance, yeah? The Prophet Muhammad was given a range of different prophecies, a range of different predictions. He made a range of different uh, predictions of the future. And, he, and the Quran even makes up. So the Quran talks about the fact that the Romans would defeat the Persian Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly where and the Persians would be defeated by the Greeks, and the Greeks would be defeated by the Romans. These things are mentioned. It's that dream, in it, the yeah. Nebuchadnezzar's dream or something. This, but well, here's the thing: you know, when you have someone who predicts the future, they might make a hundred predictions, but of those predictions, you find that which actually contradicts the initial premise. Let me give you an example: the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, they made a prediction. They said in 1971 or 1977, it's going to be the end of the world. Okay. They said it's going to be the end of the world. Obviously, I'm speaking here in 2018. Made it. <laughs> it falsifies that prediction. Yeah. So which shows us something. It shows us that not only are predictions important, but if, you, if the predictions are falsified, that they're disproven. They yeah, called yeah. this state the Great Depression afterwards because they realized that actually it couldn't be a revelation. That particular thing. How could it be a revelation? Yeah. Now here's the point. We're saying that the Quran, the Hadith, you know the Prophet Muhammad told us where Islam will spread to. 
He said it will spread to Yemen and it will spread to Syria and Jordan and Palestine. Yeah. And it will take over the whole Arabian France it will take over the whole yeah, Arabian yeah. Peninsula. And it will go to the to the east and to the west. It's all, it's all been foretold. It's all been foretold. Yeah, yeah. You see, even the Quran said the hadith says that you you will have Constantinople and that you, that, that will be conquered. Constantinople is Istanbul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that time it was the heart land yeah. of the um, of the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire. So here the point is this. These kinds of predictions, they help us more in terms of, by way of, giving us evidence that this man was not just a man who came in history and no, he wasn't. Result, right? He wasn't. He knew he what was going on. Someone, yeah. Yes. Who I agree. Was, who had something revealed from God. Yeah, so these I are evidences. That. So if you believe in this now, yeah, yeah. we we'll go back to what we originally said. I, I, I originally, the thing is, yeah. like, I believe that all those things that are uh, foretold and I believe in them, they're also in the Old Testament as well. They yes, are. There are some that doesn't real. make me to I, that a look, faith that associated to that. Like what I've just mentioned is not in the Old Testament. Wh which bit? The fact that there's a prediction about what's going to happen with the Roman and the Persians. That bit is. That's in the Bible. That's in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. No. Is it? I'm not talking this specific battle because look, the Quran oh, okay. says, "Guli bat Rom fi ad al ard, Rom min baad ya qalbi imsa yaqibun fi bid al asilin." Allah al amr wa qabla min baad yom idh yafla al mu'minun. It says that the Romans have been defeated. In, uh, they have been defeated. What about the room? The far corners. Huh? The far corners of the earth. No, the, the, the Romans have been defeated. And that they will defeat the Persians after. In three to nine years. And it will happen in a nearby lowland. Let me tell you something. Do you know this battle? It took place exactly eight years after this verse came down. Really? The Romans did defeat the Persians, but not only did they defeat the Persians eight years afterwards, like the Quran said, three to nine years, but they also it happened in a place which was geo uh, geologically, Where which is the it was. It's happened in the banks of the Dead Sea, mm. which is in present day like Palestine area. Yeah? Okay. If you look at the word Edna in Arabic, it means a nearby low land. And if you look at that place geologically, it is close to Saudi Arabia, geogra uh, ge uh, geographically, but geologically, it is actually the lowest place in the world. It's the lowest part. Get a map, because uh, you get these maps sometimes, which tell you the altitude yeah, of certain yeah, yeah. areas. You'll find that, for example, the mountainous regions are in red or something, and the low regions are in blue. Right. This region is the most blue part of the whole map, and the reason why is because it's the lowest part of the earth. So the Quran says, the Edna are in the nearby low land. So it's, nice. it's very, very specific. Yeah, it is. It's not just because I can say, look, Man United is going to win the Premier, uh, Premiership Cup. Yeah, mm. that's a very vague kind of prediction. Right. But if I tell you who they're going to beat and where they're going to beat them and how yeah, they're going yeah, to beat exactly. them, yeah, yeah, exactly. The last game and everything. Yeah. If I knew that information, I'd be exactly. a millionaire, wouldn't I? Yeah, you would. Because I could at least, mate. William Hill. Yeah, exactly. You know, at least a millionaire. Here's the money. <laughs> the point I'm making to you is this. I'm making to you is that when it comes to predictions, they're a foolproof way. To see to what extent someone could be talking to, uh, to uh, the truth from God. Mm -hmm. Because no one can, by certainty, know the truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth of the future. Right, yeah, yeah. No one I can agree, do that. I agree. Right? So you have Nostradamus and these people. But if you look at their corpus of predictions, we had some things which were. Which, which made sense. Mm -hmm. Some other things which are very generic, and other things which were false. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the same as these kinds of things here. So from that angle, these are evidences that this man was speaking the truth. So what do you, what do you think? Well, I appreciate the amount of knowledge you have to support it. And I, okay. I, I, I agree with it all. Like, uh, in terms of, um, I like the fact that you've got the the supporting facts of like so what's, how the what's, what's holding you back at this from stage? saying it yeah. it's just because um, I agree with everything about the, yeah. the gods yes. right I worship like the god the almighty god anything that says that he is the like the domino denomination of all yes. obviously I have to agree with it yes. and, the, and the fact that I also agree that like God can give us infinite power and he's led us this way so far through prophets essentially what multiple diff different you know people are saying these prophets exist or whatever the word is for them and I believe in it as well. Or like, I in fact feel like I know it's real. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I know. Like, uh, the the thing that, that I don't know. It's just maybe because because I feel like it becomes down to me and God at the end of the day. I, I'm not putting down the religion. No, no, I still will. I still look at it and we will like study it in my. Do you mind if I ask a question? What you just said? No. <laughs> please, please, no. <laughs> I know, he showed me who you are. Maybe I'm not on it. We're here to have a conversation, and I know you're here only to shut 
have any conversation with Muslims. Yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even ask my question. Ask Muslims, right? He made some statements. Yeah, I want him to pick up. I want him to pick up. He's not interested in your response. No, you just want to answer. Yeah, we're, we're not on it. This is fake news. If you don't want it, then just move yeah. on. So, he made respect. some claims. That's what I'm saying. He made That's some claims. I want him to make. I want him to make. I'll tell you what the best thing for me to do is. Yeah. I'll give you my number. It's good. It's good. I'll give you my number. We can talk. God bless you, man. God bless you. We have some questions and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, lovely. And, uh, yeah, and I feel that you're a very, very genuine guy, Not very sincere. You. And I don't want to put any pressure on you. No, no. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay. But I'll say one thing, right? One thing you believe as Muslims is that when you embrace Islam, that all of the previous sins that you may have committed, they are wiped away. So as if you are born again. To use a Christian. But I, I, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to pay my dues as well on those. I'll give you my number. God bless you, man. God bless you. And let it go. We'll let it go. And yeah. if you just tell him what outside, thing outside you, over there, you know. we've got like um, English Qurans, like translations of okay. meanings of Qurans. When you leave, it, if you leave the park from that side, you'll get, you'll get it. God bless you, man. Sir, can you just tell him? Just give him one of them. Yeah. Just tell him when he 